is better than perfect. I'm your host, John Grubbs. Welcome to the show. As you know, I always start the show with some, well, some interesting things that are in the news. And I found some things today that I think you will find, well, if not funny, at least remarkable. So here they are. This is from didyouknows.com. Did you know there was a didyouknows.com? I certainly didn't. But did you know the average person falls asleep in seven minutes? Seven minutes. Did you know a bear has 42 teeth? Imagine his dental bill. Did you know an ostrich eye is bigger than an ostrich brain? <laughs> that explains a lot. Did you know that lemons contain more sugar than strawberries? I certainly didn't. And did you know 8% of people have an extra rib in their body? And did you know that 85% of plant life is found in the ocean? Think about all the trees and all of the foliage that we see, and that only constitute 15% of plant life on land. 85% is in the ocean. Wow. And here's the big one. Did you know that Ralph Lauren's original name was Ralph Lifshitz? Sounds like a name change was a good decision for Ralph. Who'd have thought? Ralph Lifshitz. I don't think we would have bought too many clothes with the logo Ralph Lifshitz. Okay, I just spent the weekend in California at my son's black belt test, and I originally decided not to attend because of my busy business schedule. I'm on the road a lot, I travel a lot, um, but I want you to listen to the end of this video because we're gonna come back to this story and I'm gonna share with you something that I think you will find remarkable. Now, before we get into our topic, I want to remind you to like and subscribe this video. Ring the little bell about new shows as they're released and share the link to these videos on all your social media platforms because together we can make the world a better place one video at a time. So do you ever feel stuck in life? Do you feel stuck at school, stuck in what you're studying? Do you feel like you're, you're not making any headway? Do you feel like you're stuck with a group of friends that aren't necessarily good for you or maybe you don't have enough friends in your life? Do you ever feel stuck in relationships that maybe aren't going anywhere that don't give you satisfaction? Do you ever feel stuck in your career, in what you're doing for a living? And do you ever feel stuck about trying to get healthy, whether it be working out or eating right? And do you ever feel stuck when it comes to money and financial decisions in your life? If you're like most people, you said yes to many, if not, well, all of these. We all feel stuck at some point in our lives. So today's topic is about making better decisions, making decisions faster, having more confidence in your decisions. Think about the decisions we made in our life like buying a home, choosing a college, starting a business. Decision making is such a major part of our life that shapes the future path for us as individuals. Most people make decisions, believe it or not, based on fear, poor self-esteem, and even worse, low willpower. So I want to share with you 10 ways to make better decisions in your life to get better at this muscle we call decision making. And we'll start to num with number one. First of all, trust your instincts. In his book, Blink, Malcolm Gladwell shared that our brain makes decisions quickly that are usually the best. They're based on instinct and you know micro expressions that we see in other people. The brain has formed its ability to make these decisions in order for us to survive as human beings. And the truth is we often overthink and analyze our way to becoming paralyzed when it comes to decisions. In other words, we need to trust our intuition and our unconscious emotions. They exist for a reason. So number one, trust your instincts. They are usually right. Now I'm not saying make decisions based on instincts alone, but always trust that little voice in your head that's telling you what you should be thinking. That's number one, trust your instincts. Number two, use both sides of your brain. Rational decision making is made on the left side of the brain or what we call the logical side of our brain. 
emotional decision making is on the right side of our brain and the right side of the brain is dominant for most people because it makes us feel more comfortable and believe it or not folks comfortable decisions are not usually the best for us so try to use both sides of your brain both the rational side of the brain and the emotional side of the brain and realize that the decision is probably somewhere in the middle number three visualize your future where do you want to be in two years where do you want to be in five years make decisions to support your long term rather than short-term reality in other words where do I want to be in two years do I want to be in school do I want to be finished with school do I want to own my own business do I want to have written a book picture yourself two years into the future or five years into the future if more money is important to you ask yourself what education do I need in order to achieve this goal and then write these goals down and chart a path to making them possible be brutally honest with yourself so see into your future. Make decisions that are going to help you achieve the two-year goal and the five-year goal. That's number three. Number four, give yourself credit. We often take past decisions and success for granted. Everything that has led you to where you are today is a succession of decisions that you've made. Realize the work and effort you made to be exactly where you are right now. It didn't just happen you made it happen or conversely you made decisions to keep you from being where you want to be examine those decisions and give yourself credit for the decisions you made and sometimes more difficultly the decisions you did not make number five don't let others make the decision for you other people cannot know what's in your brain they only know what you tell them and it's important to get input from others However, you need to own your own decisions. You know, big decisions are often, well, other people can be like boat anchors when it comes to big decisions. They can be the ones that hold us back because they want to protect us from failure or protect us from risk. You know, own your own big decisions. My big decision is to do X. I'm going to join the military. Well, how many parents out there are happy to see a son or a daughter join the military? However, it's a decision that may put that young person on a path to something remarkable. I spent three and a half years in the Army Infantry, and it made me the human I am today. And I'll tell you, I don't think either of my parents were excited to hear that I was going to join the military, much less the infantry at the beginning of the first Gulf War. So don't let others make your decisions. That's number five. Number six, consult with yourself. Develop a list of pros and cons. Ask what you really want in life. What is on your path to the future you desire? You know, Brene Brown in her book, Dare to Lead, talked about having two core values. And her two core values were faith and courage. And it's, it's difficult to condense your values into two. Mine, after working on this for a few weeks, ended up being my two core values are one, learning, and two, service. So all the other values in my life fall under those. I love to learn and I love to serve others. Do your decisions align with your core values? You know, I'm in the process of making the decision to possibly go back to school to work on a PhD. I'm not gonna do that while my youngest son is still in school at home, but my core values of learning makes me want to make the decision to start school whenever he leaves home or starts college. That's a core value. So number six is consult with yourself. Number seven, go all in. Half-hearted decisions are doomed. We can't halfway find ourselves to successful. We have to be all in. Half-hearted decisions are predestined to fail because we're not giving them all the effort that they deserve. And we end up becoming a saboteur. We sabotage ourselves with lukewarm effort. Go all in. Make adjustments as you go, but go hard. Don't go halfway. Don't make half-hearted decisions that you are not fully committed to. Commitment, grit, all those things that are powerful characteristics that we admire in others, we can do that in ourselves. I'm going all in with this. Good, bad, indifferent, I'm going all in. That's number seven. Number eight, get a coach. A coach is someone who will keep you on track. They will prevent you from wiggling out of your choices at a whim or when we hit a difficult spot. 
They will push us into our discomfort zone. And remember, good coaches don't necessarily give you answers. They question your answers. A good coach is not someone that is going to advise you, but they're going to make you think about the decision that you're making and what will be the impact on your life based from that decision. So number eight is get a coach. Number nine, be the fly on the wall. Imagine you're giving advice to another person. What would you tell them? And then how would you tell them? Give yourself the same advice you would give them in your own words. Take yourself out of your life and put yourself on the wall, just like the fly, and see how that decision looks through the lens of another. You know, it's much easier to give advice than it is to take it. So step out of your life, be the fly on the wall. That's number nine. Number 10, join a peer group. Peer groups and accountability partners are powerful in our lives. They ask the hard questions. They keep us from procrastinating or watering down our effort. And I'm not talking about a support group that affirms our own emotions and decisions. I'm talking about a group that will push you, that will challenge you, and most importantly, challenge your decisions. Now, back to my story. I talked about this past weekend spending uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in California. Now, when I first found out that my oldest son, Cameron, was going to take his black belt test in early August, we had just come off vacation. I've been real busy traveling at work, blah, blah, blah. Well, my peer group challenged me when I mentioned not attending. They told me I would regret not being there. And of course, they were right. They helped me make the right decision and by proxy some amazing memories. Now, that decision that I made was the wrong decision. And if they had not been in my life to challenge that decision, to push me and to say, why aren't you going? Then I would have probably not attended this past weekend. So I can't tell you how much that peer group helps me make difficult decisions in life that I think I have figured out in my own mind, but when I filter it through the minds of others, I can see a new reality. We all have blind spots in our lives and peer groups help you find those blind spots. So number 10, find a good peer group and make sure it's not just a group that is going to tell you what you want to hear. It's not a support group, it's a peer group, it's an accountability group. So if you like today's video, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Other people need this show. Help them by sharing it everywhere. Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you share social media, I want you to share this show. Because together, together we can make the world a better place, one video at a time. Now, if you're new to my show, then I want to give you a little bit of background. This show is called Done is Better Than Perfect. It is for all recovering perfectionists out there who have been hard on themselves, and they live with guilt and shame for not living up to whatever expectations they have of themselves or others have of them. So always remember, done is better than perfect. I'll see you next time.